All right, so finally, after what seems like multiple delays, my 2023 Shimano Calcutta Conquest BFS has finally arrived. And this reel is arguably probably the most anticipated bait finesse reel of all time. So let's get into it. And I got this from Japan Lure Shop. Now a lot of you guys watching this video may be rushing online to pick one of these up, but don't be surprised if you can't find any, at least on the Japanese websites. And you may not see them in stock for a couple of weeks. And that's due to the fact that I guess all the pre-orders took up pretty much all the initial batches that were sent out but I got a pretty cool vision 110 that's like a, a really nice color Wow now I'm assuming these free gifts that you get with Japan lure shop are like stocked at I guess they can't sell and I'm not sure why this color wouldn't sell but oh well all right here we go Now what's funny is that initially I actually didn't even want to buy this reel, but the way I do videos is I'll review tackle that I'm interested in or tackle that has marketplace significance. And this reel definitely has a lot of marketplace significance, especially in the bait finesse world. And this reel definitely has a lot of marketplace significance, particularly in the bait finesse world. And going back and reviewing some of my videos, the review of the 2017 Conquest BFS is probably one of my more popular videos of all time. So I realized, you know, a lot of people are looking for information about that reel. So they're gonna be looking for information about this reel as well. So, let's stop blabbing and open up this box. The box is a dark gray color versus black like the previous model paperwork a nice breathable I guess neoprene ish bag and this is kind of new at least I think I don't remember any Shimano's they were coming with this top okay here we go and no oil not even BFS oil Nice crispy crinkly bag. Okay, here we go. So now you've seen the turntable footage, I'm just going to let you guys take a closer look at this reel. I'm going to try to turn it slowly so you can take in all the details. Now I thought these were scratches initially, but it's actually the uh, lettering for the minimum and maximum external dial setting. Check out that thumb bar. course made in Japan as it should be for this price you can definitely see the I guess machining lines on the body of this all metal Conquest BFS. All 
All right, so the reel is very, very smooth. But we'll go more into that later on when we do the comparison with the old model. But yeah, for those of you who own the 2017 Conquest BFS, how many changes have you noticed in this new reel? All right, let me do my inspection and uh, I'll be right back. So this is where I would normally take out a bunch of competing reels to do a size comparison. But since the Conquest BFS literally has no round BFS reels to compete against, I guess the only real competition for this new Conquest is the old one. So I'm going to put both reels on the screen for you. All right, so what you have in front of you is the new Conquest and the old Conquest BFS. And can you tell the difference between the two without really taking the time to study them? And the answer is probably no. And that is the main reason why I was initially going to pass on this new Conquest BFS because it looked too similar to the old one. I felt Shimano should have done a lot more to separate it from the old model, but oh well. Now, let's go over all the changes that I found in this new reel versus the old reel. Now, just in case you're wondering, this is the new one and that's the old one. All right, so obviously the main difference between the two is that the new reel is using the new generation conquest frame and side plates which i showed you guys earlier so that means you get less i guess holes drilled into the palm side plate the gear side plate is a lot busier a lot more uh, machining going on you can definitely see the design language while the old one is a lot more simple, just two circles, the new one has got, I guess, this extended piece that goes beneath the spool tension from the gearbox. Now, the new reel is still using Shimano's S compact body, where the palm side plate is smaller and lower than the gear side plate. You can definitely see it right there. And of course, the old one had it too but it was more pronounced in the old one. Definitely more pronounced. So the next change is gonna be a new handle and knob assembly. Even though it looks pretty much exactly like the old one, the new handle is now shorter at 80 millimeters versus 84 for the old one. You can definitely see the difference there. The knobs are new, they're a little bit flatter. Hopefully you can see there. And of course you get new knob end caps. And you also still keep the gold anodization on the inner part of the handle, but you also get a new ugly plastic nut retainer. Now, if you were thinking, you know, this is the exact same handle knobs you get on the much cheaper Aldebaran BFS, you'd be right. And that was one of the main criticisms I gave to the old Conquest, was that for the price they are charging, which is like over $100 more than the Aldebaran, it really needs a special standalone handle and knob assembly. And definitely, it should not have this cheap plastic nut retainer. Now the next change is a very welcome one in my opinion, and that is the new reel has a huge spool tension knob. And let me show you the old one just so you can see the size difference. Hopefully you guys can see there. The new one is much bigger. It's a lot easier to get a hold of if you want to make spool tension adjustments. Now it's still got that little gold banding around it, but it lost its 
indicator dial, which really served no function anyway, at least for me. But the good news is, is that it still clicks. And I'm gonna say that the clicks are a little bit closer together and a little bit more precise than the old one. At least going back and forth like this. Now it is a little harder to turn. It's not quite as easy to turn this new spool tension, but that could just be my particular reel. But that is a welcome change because I prefer a bigger spool tension knob. Now the next change is that the line guide is now gold, which I prefer. The old one was black. And I studied both line guides and they appear to be the exact same ones other than the color. And I don't think I even noticed this in the old one, but they are slightly tapered. You can definitely see if you look from the top, the opening of the line guide is wider than the exit. So yeah, even this round reel has a tapered line guide, which let's be honest, look how close the line guide is to the spool. It really needed it and it probably needs an even bigger one. Now the new reel has a smaller thumb bar where the rubber piece is a little bit different. And hopefully you guys can tell that the new thumb bar is smaller. You can definitely feel it when you are pressing the thumb bar. Yep, the new one is definitely smaller. But luckily, just like with pretty much all Shimano's, there's no mush, no slop, no play. And pressing the thumb bar is actually quite pleasurable on the Conquest. It's very precise and positive feeling and it takes a little bit more effort to push down than your average, I guess, thumb bar you'll find on lower end reels. Now the next thing that's changed on the new reel is the brake adjustment. Here's the new one. Here's the old one. First of all, the cutout in the side plate is much bigger in the new one, but the dial itself has been flipped around. So you can see that the minimum and maximum lettering on the old reel is at the center of the side plate, while on the new one, the min and max lettering is on the edge. And you can also see that they got rid of those, I guess, adjustment dots that kind of let you know how much you've adjusted the reel. And it's no longer there on the new one. Kind of disappointing, but I guess you really can't have that with this new brake dial cutout. The only thing you get is that little dot there down at the bottom where I guess that shows you you're at the middle of the brake setting. Now the dial itself, I thought it was smaller on the new one, but I actually think they're the same size. I don't know. Maybe it's a little bit smaller, but you can see they added a little hole there while the new one did not have it. And I think I prefer the dots of the old one. Yeah, the brake adjustment has changed on the new reel. Now here's another change that I personally am indifferent about because I never used it, but a lot of you other Conquest BFS owners may have, but on the old reel, there was this semi-clear plastic plate on the inner part of the gearbox, which I believe you could undo by turning that screw. And if you shine a light through this, you can definitely see the gear inside, but that is gone on the new one. It's no longer there. So I don't know how many of you guys have actually used this, but I do know that it came in handy because Shimano doesn't really want you guys opening up the reel to grease the gears on the super tiny teeth and the super tight tolerances of the micromodule gears. Now speaking of gears, the new reel 
comes in two gear ratios now. You have your HG, which is, I believe, 7.8 to 1. While on the old reel, this was also designated, I guess, as an HG, but it was a 6.8 to 1. Now I have the XG. Yep, right there. And this is an 8.9 to 1 gear ratio. And I'm going to show you a picture of the old and the new gears. And you can see that the new gears are much bigger, probably to accommodate the higher gear ratios. And one thing you can also see, and this might be a disappointment for a lot of you guys, is that the new gears are aluminum now instead of brass. Or I should say Duralumin. And if you take a closer look, you can see that while both reels have micromodule gears, the teeth on the old reel are noticeably smaller. And I think only Shimano's brass gears will have those super, super fine micromodule gear teeth. And only on their really upper end reels like the Antares and the Conquest. Now, Shimano claims that the new reel has one extra bearing. So it has a total of a whopping 13 plus one bearings. And I'm sure if I look at the schematics, I can find out where that extra bearing went, but it really doesn't matter. These reels have more bearings than pretty much most reels on the market, as well as they should due to their price points. All right, so the changes and differences I showed you guys so far have been somewhat trivial. And now it's time to get to the important changes. And this is probably gonna be aimed more towards the guys that have the old reel and you're wondering if you should spend the money on getting the new reel whether it's going to be an upgrade or not so let us begin all right so the first important change and of course this is going to be strictly subjective but in my opinion the drag clicker sounds better now here's the old one Hopefully the microphone is picking that up, but I'm going to stick it right next to the mic. And let you guys hear that. And here's the new one. I'm going to stick it next to the mic. All right, so what I heard is that the new one has a slightly deeper, less plasticky tone, definitely lower pitched, and it's definitely not as loud. So let me know in the comments if you agree with that. Now the old one, I don't know, it could be just my reel, but it's super easy to engage the drag clicker. Now listen. And I think that attributed to the old generation or the previous generation Shimano BFS reels not feeling quite as buttery smooth when you're cranking the handle. Now with the new one, these sudden jerks don't initiate the drag clicker. So one complaint about the old 2016 Aldebaran that I had was that just when you had no resistance on the line turning the handle it was kind of loud and it didn't feel as smooth as let's say some of its competition like the Daiwa SS Air but once you you know crank the drag star down and started fishing and cranking the handle that all disappeared and it became incredibly smooth so with these new generation Shimano BFS reels, like this new Conquest and the new Aldebaran, it is super smooth and quiet when you turn the handle. Now, on the subject of smoothness, the old reel, along with probably my 2019 and 2016 Antares, is probably the smoothest reel that I've ever owned. Super smooth, you don't feel any kind of gear mesh at all. It feels like the gears literally have no teeth. Now what about the new one? 
Now remember, they changed the gear material out to dual lumen from brass. And a lot of people say aluminum gears are not as smooth as brass. And I'm here to tell you, I can't tell the difference. I cannot tell the difference. I can't tell that one wheel has brass gears while the other has aluminum gears. The only difference I feel is that this new reel is tighter. It takes a little bit more effort to turn the handle, but I will say that I think I felt that with the old reel once I got it. Now after some use, I'm sure it's gonna loosen up nicely, but also keep in mind with these higher gear ratios, the main gear on the new reel is much bigger. But I'm happy to report that the new reel feels just as tight and buttery smooth. I can feel literally no gear mesh, and yeah. Okay, so I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking that I totally forgot about this, but of course I didn't. We're gonna talk about the difference in the size, and more importantly, the palm and comfort of both reels. Now, I did a preview video on the old Conquest and the new and the thumbnail showed that the new reel was definitely smaller. I don't know if you guys can tell by me holding them up side by side like this, trying to line up the reel feet. And when we switch sides, maybe you can tell now. But yeah, the new Conquest palming side plate is a little bit smaller, but hopefully you can see that it's gonna palm lower because more of the side plate is hanging lower than the real foot. Now I don't have any digital calipers to measure exactly how much smaller, but from the top, you can definitely see that the new reel, the gearbox looks to be a little bit more tucked away. Not sticking out quite as much as the old reel. And when I switch sides, the old reel definitely looks bigger. But now let's talk about the palming comfort. So now it's time to talk about the, I guess, size and comfort of the new reel versus the old one. This is probably really going to interest the current owners of the old Conquest BFS. Now I got some good news and some somewhat bad news. Now the good news is that the new reel most definitely palms smaller. Definitely palms smaller and lower than the old reel going back and forth from one to the other you can definitely feel it and of course that shouldn't be a surprise because if you take a look at the reel mounted on a rod that has a Fuji ACS reel seat versus the old one you could definitely see that the newer reel definitely sits lower as more of its side plate is hanging lower in position to the reel foot and of course the side plate is smaller in diameter as well. So yeah, it is definitely an upgrade when it comes to palming size. But here's a little bit of bad news for, I guess, some of you guys. And it's really not bad news. It's just gonna take some adjustment. But when I'm fishing, I palm with the rod trigger in between my pinky and my ring finger. So with the old Conquest, I'm fishing like this. And you can see my middle finger fits comfortably underneath the frame and the gearbox. Now with the new reel, when I palm it, it looks like this. So my middle finger can't comfortably sit underneath the frame there. It feels pinched. And I mean, I could do this, but that to me feels unnatural. And when I'm resting my middle finger on the frame, while it's not super sharp, there are a couple of sharp edges there and it definitely makes me notice that. So what I'm probably gonna have to do is I'm probably gonna have to adjust my palming to put my middle finger right on the gearbox like this, which feels more comfortable. But of course, that's a personal preference. But yeah, I can't palm the reel like I would normally palm the old reel with my middle finger right here. I mean, but other than that, this new Conquest BFS is very, very small and low profile for a round reel. Still not as low as, of course, the low profile reels, but it's definitely not uncomfortable to palm. 
at least on the palm side plate. So now it's time to get to the really important major changes to this reel and that's going to be the spool and the brakes of course. Now before we get to the spool and the brakes I want to go over something that I feel is important for all you guys who plan on getting the new reel and that is how to open up the side plate and access the spool and also how to put the side plate back on. Now with the old reel opening up the side plate to access the spool was done like this. There was a lever right here and once you push on it you can see the side plate pretty much flipped open and it is attached. And then of course you would go like this and pull this whole assembly out. Now of course to reattach the side plate you just push it back in and flip the latch and there you go. Now with the new reel it's different. Now the latch has moved to here directly underneath the palm side plate. So of course you flip that latch and you'll see the side plate come off. Now this side plate is not attached which is kind of disappointing. And I'll go over why in a moment but yeah the whole side plate comes off and there you go now to put the side plate back on what you want to do is you see that uh, hole right there you line it up and put that piece of metal in the hole just like that and a lot of you guys are probably going to be pushing down on this thinking that it's going to sit snug into the frame and then you flip the latch back but that's not how it works. So once you got the hole and that little port lined up I would just put my finger right here and then you flip the latch back and it automatically comes down and secures itself. So I was fidgeting around with this side plate for like a minute trying to get it to sit flush against the frame before I flip the latch but that's not how it works. So that's how you open and close the side plate on the new Conquest BFS. Okay so I got the scale out and obviously with the Conquest BFS being pretty much all metal Shimano wasn't really prioritizing making this reel super lightweight but I think they did say that it lost a little bit of weight and let's see if that's true. Here's the old reel, and I guess it would help if I switch the units to ounces, and it says 7.16 ounces. Alright, so the new one, 6.91, so it actually did lose almost 3 tenths of an ounce. Now personally in hand, I don't feel it. I guess since the new one is smaller, more compact, it feels denser. But yeah, the new Conquest did lose a little bit of weight over the old one. So let's get to the most important part of a Bay Finesse reel. And that's going to be the spool and the brakes. So when it comes to the spool and the braking system, the new Conquest is just like the old one in the fact that the spool and brake technology is being transferred over from the Aldebaran BFS. So that means the new Conquest is going to get the MGL3 spool which is shorter and thinner versus the old spool so you can really see the size difference when you hold them like this so this is now a 29 millimeter diameter spool which is more than likely 29 and a half millimeter versus 32 millimeters for the old spool and then now it's 19 millimeters in width versus 22 for the old one and you can definitely see the difference there. Now you can also see that the new spool is barely ported at all versus the old one. But the new spool retains that uh, internal reinforcement ribbing. You can tell by that gold color ring on the inside of the spool. And the old spool had it as well. And this is supposed to reinforce the spool so you can use light braid. Now the big difference between the old and the new spool is pretty significant and not just the size. Alright so let's see what the scale says. 
as far as weight. Now the old spool, you're looking at 7.9 grams with its tiny micro bearing. The new one, you're looking at 6.7 grams with its tiny micro bearing. Now I'm not gonna take these bearings off, but I'm gonna tell you the weights of these spools without the bearings based on the Aldebaran spool. Now the old spool weighed about 7.2 grams without its bearing, or maybe even 7.1. And based on the Aldebaran BFS spool, without this bearing, this spool should weigh about 5.7 to 5.8 grams. So in the grand scheme of things, when it comes to JDM BFS reels, this Conquest spool should be pretty much tied with the Aldebaran as having the lightest stock BFS spool for a JDM reel, or at least until the new SS Air comes out. Now the smaller size and the lighter weight of the new spool is not the only big change. Another huge change, in my opinion, is the fact that this new spool is sporting Shimano Silent Tune. And I would like to take this opportunity to officially apologize to Shimano and publicly say that I want you to keep the O-Ring Silent Tune on your reels, even though it may cause reel setup issues sometimes. And let me show you what the O-Ring Silent Tune is. So if you look at the spool bearing, hopefully the camera will focus, that black thing you see on the bearing is an O-Ring. And then on the other side of the spool, there's an O-Ring on the spool shaft itself. Now, what this does is it pretty much seals the bearing in place, as far as the spool bearing goes, to the frame. And then on the other side, this pretty much seals the spool shaft to the inner part of the palm side bearing. So if you have a 22 Aldebaran BFS, this is the reason why that reel has this unreal, super smooth, super quiet casting experience. It's the O-Ring Silent Tune. Plus the fact that Shimano's stock spool bearings are the best in the business by far. And luckily, it looks like that technology is transferred over to the new Conquest BFS. And hopefully it's going to give us that same super smooth yet super fast casting experience that the 22 Aldebaran BFS gives us. So not surprisingly, just like the new Aldebaran, the new Conquest BFS gets the updated retuned finesse tune brake system or FTB for short. And of course, this is a dynamic magnetic brake system, just like the old FTB. Now, for those of you who are new to my channel and you don't know what a dynamic magnetic brake system is, it's a magnetic brake system where the magnetic field changes during the cast due to some kind of a moving part. So in the case of Shimano's FTB, the moving part or parts are these two bank of magnets. And basically one side of these bank of magnets pivot and get closer to the spool during the initial part of the cast where they're needed the most. And then they pop back down during the latter half of the cast, theoretically extending the cast distance. So the spool fits over the brakes just like that. And then of course you can control how much braking these magnets give with the external dial, which moves this whole hub closer or farther away from the spool. And that brings us to what's updated about this FTB system. Shimano claims that even with the old FTB, when you have the external dial set to the minimum position, it still gives off braking force. So they said with this new FTB, when you set it to the minimum position, it should be, I guess, sunk in further into the side plate versus the old reel. And let me compare. Well, visually it doesn't look like the brake hub has gone down any farther than the old brake hub, but you can see that I guess more of the magnets are exposed on the old system versus the new. And then Shimano included this metal ring in here to help draw away some of that uh, magnetic current. So Shimano's claiming if you're good enough, you can set these brakes to almost zero and easily pitch or flick one gram. 
which I highly doubt anyone's gonna be able to do that. So there we go, guys. A detailed analysis and comparison of the new Conquest BFS versus the old one. And what I take away from this comparison is that, yes, the new reel does palm smaller, but I don't like the fact that I'm gonna have to reposition my middle finger, but that's just me. But I'm happy to say that the one concern I had, and that was the smoothness of the reel. But I am happy to say that the smoothness of the new reel seems to match the smoothness of the old reel. And that was a concern given that Shimano, of course, is using aluminum gears with bigger teeth for the new reel. But the Conquest lineup is known for super tight tolerances, and that's probably why the aluminum gears feel just as good as the brass. So, of course, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to string both reels up, put them on the same rod, and do a side-by-side -side casting and cranking comparison. And that's really what's going to determine whether you should upgrade from the old to the new for all you current owners of the old Conquest BFS. So be on the lookout for that. All right, guys, thanks a lot.